I'll in the Trufa, terminal yours, letter 347, with God's help me. Uh, on Wednesday, the 36th day of the counting of the owner, the rest of the days of life to my dear, learned friend, the illustrious Rabbi Ron Bear, may he live. You should know, my dear friend, that three weeks have passed since I left home with the Ummah. I stayed there for several days and I arrived home safely last night. I had been hoping to receive money from you and from my comrades before Pesach, as you yourself promised me, promised me several times in your letters. You yourself promised me several times in your letters. My friend Rabab, by his light shine, sent me a letter with money and wrote that God willing, when you call, when you came, you would certainly be sending yours. You also wrote me the same yourself several times. Now, Pesach has already, has already passed, and it is more than four weeks since then. Today is, this, is the 36th day of the Omer, and there has been no word and no money, not from you, not from our comrades. Not for my livelihood, not for the money that my friend, your father-in-law, may his light shine promised me explicitly, nor what Rapersh, may his light shine still owes, as I have written down, and what they explicitly promised on Rosh Hashanah. I have already borrowed a great deal against the sum, and I am being pressed to repay it, and, and I do not know what to do. Surely everything the merciful one does is the best, because I love you, and all our righteous, generous comrades so much, I could not restrain myself from expressing my pain. But because I love you, and all our righteous, generous comrades so much. I could not restrain myself from expressing my pain and telling you how I feel about your having been so remiss about sending me what you promised. I arrived home early last night. There I found your letter to your righteous mother. Here she lived and I read it. While you do make apologies for yourself, you nonetheless know, and you wrote it yourself in this letter, that you have absolutely no excuses, neither to your mother nor to me. Here I am today in the midst of a great project which I have begun. In addition, I must spend a great deal of money on sending the books from here, which is extremely urgent for a number of reasons, and an incalculably great mitzvah for the good of the wider community. The only thing holding it, it up is money. The only thing holding it up is money. Also, there is a man from there who is here with me today, and I have a great deal to discuss with you about this, but it is impossible in this context. I had been expecting you to come for Shavuos when I could speak with you face to face, but in light of your letter, I did not know if you would be here for Shavuos, and I had no idea what to do or with whom to get counsel about this. I applied to myself first, I considered myself, and I realized that I am like a lone bird on a rooftop. I considered myself, and I realized that I am like a lone bird on a rooftop. I considered myself, and I realized that I am like a lone bird on a rooftop. God knows that in all the projects that, that, that thanks to His kindness, I have completed that thanks to his kindness I have completed, my intentions have been for good. Now too, in the project that I started last year, my only intention is for heaven, to fulfill the will and desire of your grandfather, to fulfill the will and desire of your grandfather, our master teacher and Rebbe of holy scented memory. This project is for the benefit of the wider community for all generations and you, along with my friend Rebbe A, have been a great help to me. But now you have both slack, slackens, you in particular, after God has helped you and thank God you have profited through his kindness, it is appropriate for you to attribute your success to this charity as well, and to accept it upon yourself to be a major help to me in this project and in my livelihood. But now you are being negligent, when, as you can understand for yourself, since you just spend so much on a house and so on, you actually ought to be spending even more on this feast, for it is necessary to give God's share first, as we see in the commandments of Bikurim and Shumal, which are referred to as first. Whatever God sends to a person, he must be quick to give the first portion of the honor to God. Especially for projects such as the ones we have begun, the magnitude of the merits ascribed to all those who help and support me, and this is absolutely impossible to express. The magnitude of the merits ascribed to all those who help and support me in this is absolutely impossible to express. The most painful thing for me is that you wrote that you will not be here at this coming Shavuos. I do not know if there will still be time for you to make the journey after this letter reaches you. In any case, I ask that at least now you should be careful to send me what you promised and to get all you can from our comrades as well, in particular what is owing from your father-in-law and from Reb Svi and his light shining in accordance with their pledges, as I have already written several times. Do not neglect this anymore. 
when, God willing, He helps me to meet with you, we will speak face to face about how to proceed in our projects. With His help and great salvation, it seems to me that the best thing, if God forbid you do not come for Shavuos, will be for you to be sure to come here with my in-law, Reparitz, may His light shine, for the wedding of my granddaughter, may she live. There are many things which we have to, which we must discuss face to face right after Shavuos. For I am forced to send Reb Nachman of Tulchin with a visa to the place where he was last year, and there are many other matters about which I have to speak with you. You will also give great pleasure to your righteous mother, may she live, and thereby perform one of the positive commandments of the Ten Commandments, i.e., honoring your mother. When a mitzvah comes your way, do not let it pass by, especially not mitzvahs such as the ones we are talking about. The Jew was created only to engage in Torah and commandments all his days. Everything else is vanity. Since I am confident in the goodness of your heart and the hearts of our comrades, and am sure that you will certainly heed these words of mine, I will not my, of mine, I will not go on any longer. May the master of compassion, the giver of the Torah, help us from now on at least to prepare ourselves as we should for the coming holy festival of Shavuos and holiness, purity, love, fear, and joy. Thus, we may we merit from now on to guard, to perform, and to fulfill all the words of this Torah amidst love, peace, life, joy, and all good, as you and I, your friend, who is more devoted than a brother, both wish. With best wishes, as always, praying for you and waiting for your quick response. Nas and abreast of greetings to all our comrades with a great love, to all of them as a group and to each one individually. There is no time to address each one individually as the honor due them would dictate. Letter 348 with God's help, Sunday, Mamidva, 601, breast love, the customary greetings to my dear beloved son. I received your letter today and I was pleased. At the moment there is nothing to write, enclosed is a letter to Lavov. Send it off quickly, without delay, because as you know it is urgent. If a letter from there should arrive in the meantime, you should write on my letter to them that you received it. I am sure you will act properly. You can understand for yourself how distressed I am over the delay in receiving the letter from there. But certainly all that the merciful, that the merciful one does is for the best. And our business in particular always involves a great deal of long waiting. In the end, God always saves, for His kindnesses are never ending. I live by this alone all the time, in all matters from the greatest to the least, whether they involve body, soul, or possessions. What am I? All of us, I, my children, and all those who are dependent on me, we all depend upon His kindness. We hope to you, God, to your simple kindnesses and compassion, which never run out. There is no time to go on about this. The words of your Father hinting to you to constantly wait for His salvation and to rejoice in His kindness. Thus, in the rest of really and truly be happy. Letter 349, this letter was written to one of our comrades. Its beginning is missing. I, too, send you greetings with a great love before Pesach. Send you greetings with a great love. Before Pesach, I sent you a rather long letter. Let subsequently I received your letter through your father-in-law, Rabbi and his light shine. And I was surprised that you had not received my letter. More than this, I'm surprised that I only received a letter from you on one occasion, and that you thereby withheld from yourself the advantage of having me write to you. And you thereby and that you thereby withheld from yourself the advantage of having me write to you. What is more, last winter I was sick in bed in Uman, and as a result I had to stay there for more than five weeks. Then I was in Tarovitsa, and stayed on the road for more than seven weeks, and I did not see a single letter from you there. My friend, your father, may his light shine, was absolutely longing for your letters. May his hopes, but his hopes were disappointed. The fact of the matter is that, in this area, you are not fulfilling your obligations to your father in the least. Afterwards, I, I arrived home in an extremely weak condition, and I found your letter written several weeks before in the possession of Reb Nassim. In the possession of Reb Nassim, the son of Reb Leib. At the time, I did not know where you were. I arrived home a little before Purim, and between Purim and Pesach, I sent you the aforementioned letter. I do not know yet if it reached you. At the moment, there is nothing to add to that letter. I only ask you to do what I wrote there and to send me what you promised in the, in the letter that I received through the aforementioned of Nassim. Also, that you should try as best you can to get money from our comrades, and in particular from my friends Reb B.M. Berger and Reb Leibler, the son of Reb Chaikle. Reb Chaikle. The son of Rab Chaikil, Rab Chaikil. I, I'm, I'm certain that you will do everything you can for my benefit, in the best part, for my benefit, in the best possible way. And God, who is good, will help you to finish well. As for what you wrote about the possibility of your future-in-law, your future-in-law may he live, changing the date of the marriage to one earlier than was specified in the marriage agreement. He already told you that it is simply not possible. He was already at my house and apologized profusely. 
He said that he would hold the wedding at the specified time with God's help and that he might possibly move it closer and hold it this coming El. What I think is that you should come here, no excuses for this coming Shavuos, and that everything will be concluded in the best possible way. Also, the 50 rubles which he already paid off are in the possession of a very reliable trustee. The time for payment has already arrived and I do not wish to be involved in this any longer. I do not want to put the money in trust. Rather, you should come and deposit it with whoever you wish. Because of all this, I do not want to elaborate anymore. Just be sure to do as I have asked as I have asked, and send me what money you can from yourself or from others. After that, start preparing yourself to come here for Shavuos that you may derive physical, spiritual, and, finan and financial benefit. As well as do good for the future couple, may they live. May the master of salvation and comfort console you and save you both physically and spiritually so that you merit to flee and, and to draw close to God in everything you are going through until it all turns into good. There is a tremendous amount to say about this, but there is neither time nor space in the page. Besides, I am expecting you to come yourself, God willing, as I discussed. Then with God's salvation, we will speak face to face, to face according to all that His kindness and inexhaustible and inexhaustible wonders bestow upon us. We will be happy and rejoice over His salvation. The words of your true, eternal friend, waiting first for your answer and afterwards, and afterwards to see you soon amidst joy. Thus, an aggressive greetings to all your family and to your son, the groom. May he live. Also, to my friend, your father-in-law, may his light shine. He too should do as I ask and send some money as I wrote in the previous letter. Greetings to all our dear comrades with a great love. Whatever you send, send only to my son and the may he live in Tuchin. This letter too I am sending to Tuchin, so I have to be certain that it reaches you with God's help. Letter 315, the publisher's note, this letter refers to the printing taking place in Lemberg, Lvov, and the people who are helping their to publish the best of books. Monday night, the Haloi School 5601, greetings to my dear beloved son, the Leonard of Yitzchuk, may his light shine. I received your letter and along with it, the letter from there. I received your letter and along with it, the letter from there. You can understand for yourself the enormous satisfaction you gave me with this. I had been longing terribly all the time to hear from there. But the ways of God and how He bestows His good are absolutely impossible to fathom. What He wants is that for us to raise our eyes to Him at all times. Therefore, with every act of salvation, there is still a great deal more to yearn for because complete salvation comes. And therefore, with every act of salvation, there is still a great deal more to yearn to yearn for. To, and therefore, with every act of salvation, there is still a great deal more to yearn for before complete salvation comes. In this project, for example, the letter represents a great salvation for me. But nonetheless, my joy is not complete because I am not clear at all. And I do not understand his word because I am not clear at all. And I do not understand his words. I only sense that everyone there in the love wants me to make a large profit. To make a large pro Wants to make a large profit on me. And I do not know what answer to give him. I trust that God will guide me on the straight path so that I will know how to proceed. You are receiving close here for now, letter to there. If you wish, you may add on to my words in order to encourage our friend the time to answer me at once on the letter as I must set out on my safe on my safe journey. I cannot go on because of the darkness of the night. May the master of compassion and the great advisor May the master of compassion and the great advisor may the master of compassion and great advisor grant me good counsel for the sake of his name, that we may merit to finish the Rebbe's holy projects properly and completely. Do not give honor to us, God, but give it to your name. The words of your Father, Nelson, of Letter 351, with God's help, Friday, Pashas Baloy, School 5601, warm greetings to my dear beloved friend, the learned, illustrious, and honored of Rome Bear. May he live, along with all his children. May they live. I received your letter through the wedding party, along with the eight silver rubles, and thank God all is well. As for your writing, that I should write you everything that I have to discuss with you. I do not know why I should go to all the trouble of writing you when I will soon be with you. God willing, and we will speak face to face. This is especially so sense, as you can understand for yourself, my interest is only the work of our master, teacher, and Rebbe, your holy and awesome grandfather of holy saints of memory. It is him to whom I long to minister and to do his will by spreading forth his teaching. I have no interest at all in talking to you about any other business or merchandise, but I do desire very much to relate in full to everything that has happened to me in this project. When we get together, God willing, with God's help, we will take counsel together and the plan of God will emerge. The reason I wanted you to come with my in-law, repair it, may his light shine, was, that, was not so that you would be at the wedding. 
It was not so that you would be at the wedding. Well, I certainly would have been extremely pleased to have you there. I would not have, I would not have troubled you to make a journey such as this for my own pleasure. Rather, I wanted us to be able to speak together about the work of heaven and matters concerning the eternal goal, besides which everything, besides which everything is vanity. In addition to this, I wanted you to fulfill the desire of your righteous mother, may she live, who very much wants to be together with you, and you would thus be performing the commandment of honoring your mother. Before I arrived from Uman, before Shavuiz, I thought that you would certainly, without any question, be here for Shavuiz. When I arrived home, I heard and understood from your letters that it was likely that you would not be with us for the Holy Festival. I was stunned and shocked. That is why I wrote to you as I did. God knows that my intention was not that you be here on Shavuiz for the sake of my own honor. God forbid. It was for your sake alone that perhaps you might hear some words of truth, the words of the living God emanating from the flowing stream, the source of wisdom. Words in which a person must involve himself at all times. How can I tell you, my dear friend, my son, my comrade? How can I tell you, my dear friend, my son, my comrade, and my students about God's miraculous salvation and kindnesses by which He helped me this past holy, past holy Shavuot and allowed me to say true, original teachings which give life to all souls that truly desire the truth? Surely, you and I ought to feel great regret that we were not worthy of, having, of also having you. And my friend of Abu, may his light shine, and the rest of our comrades to comfort among us. But what's done is done. Now, pay close, pay close attention to the words of your holy, awesome grandfather, our master teacher, Nebi, of saints of memory, to vigilantly guard your memory each and, every, each and every morning. That is, to remember the world to come. If you forget about it at any point afterwards, just keep on reminding yourself throughout the day. It is not for nothing that we came into this world to see toil, grief, anger, to see toil, grief, anger, pain, jealousy lust, honor, and especially the foolishness of the love of money, possessions, clothing, and jewelry. None of these things accompany a person in his death, just Torah and good deeds. Everyone knows this, and it, and it is stated explicit, explicitly in the words of a rabbi of blessed memory, reminded this times without number, that the evil one still prevails powerfully with his evil eye to bring on forgetfulness. God forbid. A person must therefore prevail mightily to constantly remind himself of this. The main method, the main method is through speech. Namely, that he should be sure to speak to this creator every day and to express himself at length about all this. And there is more than this. And there is more than this for him to talk about. For each person knows how, enorm how enormously far he is from God. And yet he also remotely understands God's great compassion and loving kindness, which are absolutely without end or limit. Thus we can still be hopeful of grabbing much good every day by means of this practice of succeeding eternally, of succeeding eternally. Thank God we rejoice wholeheartedly at the wedding with God's help. All my joy was that I reminded myself about the holy wedding with which our master, teacher, and every holy saint of memory told us about in the awesome. All my joy was that I reminded myself about the holy wedding which our master, teacher, and every holy saint of memory told us about in the awesome and consummately exalted story of the seven beggars. Happy is he who makes sure to remind himself regularly of the enormous, awesome wonders of every word. Regularly of, to remind himself regularly of the enormous, awesome wonders of every word, every event, and every one of the tales of each day of this story, every event and every one of the tales of each day of this story to awaken himself from his sleep. It is impossible for me to continue as the holiness of Shabbos is rapidly approaching. I am preparing this letter now on Erev Shabbos after midday. Maybe, just maybe, I will merit to remind myself of Yudah Baba, may his light shine and all our comrades about where we are, that we have heard such awesome things. At the very least, we are, we are, we are, we are obliged to be happy about this at all times and to trust in the great power of the elder of elders of holiness. For this reason alone, we need to get together from time to time, several times a year, just to rejoice together over the great salvation that He has bestowed upon us, and particularly upon you, since you are one of the Rebbe's holy descendants. This will suffice for now. The words of your true eternal friend, rousing and encouraging you for your eternal good, not in the breast of Letter 352, with God's help, Tuesday, Shlach, 5601. My dear beloved son, I received your letter on Sunday along with the sum of three and a half silver rubles. May God repay your deed. Then yesterday evening I received your letter together with the letter from Reb C.H. Thank God who has helped us thus far. I give thanks for the past and request for the future that God should have compassion and help us to complete many more spiritual projects such as these which heaven desires. Salvation is which heaven desires. So salvation is all in God's hands. But be sure tomorrow, be sure tomorrow to send me or have a trustworthy man send me the folio of Hush Mishpat that you still have. I, st I need it very much. I have a great deal in my heart to write to you in response to your letters in which you cry out bitterly time after time from the distance. I do understand your crying, your pain. 
pain. May the Master of Compassion pity you, and may He soon give you salvation. But you should know, my son, that no matter what, the essence of your suffering is the result of your many bad thoughts and musings. Even if you are already caught up in them, in whatever way you are, you still have free will, and you can take a hold of your thoughts every time. As I have discussed a great deal, both in writing and orally, I know that you do, you do practice this somewhat with God's help. But fortify yourself determinately. But fortify yourself determinately, my dear son, to do it more and more, and to be happy over the tiny bit that you do for this. But through the little that you do succeed in checking your thoughts and taking hold of them, you are included in the guardians of the world who elevate the concept of his flesh sealed shut to a clean, open seal, sanctified, sanctified to God. Who elevate the concept of his fell, his flesh sealed shut. Of his flesh sealed shut to a clean, open seal, sanctified to God. To a to a clean, open seal, sanctified to God, which is the concept of tefillin. For the activities of the wretched human human being in this world is something extremely deep indeed, deep, deep. Who can find it? Ashreinu, Ashreinu, how fortunate we are. We can say this thousands upon thousands of times without number, that we merited to know about a holy awesome light such as this, and about holy Torah lessons and conversations such as these, which give new life to all souls with delicacies of all kinds. Study them over and over. Study them over and over. Study them over and over every single Torah lesson and conversation without a doubt. You will be able to inspire yourself constantly, and especially with the new ideas and explanation, explanations that God, with His wonders, helped me develop, to develop from them. I do not have time to go on now. The words of your Father, waiting for your salvation, us in aggressive letter 353, with thanks to God, Sunday, Kodach, 5601. Greetings to my dear, beloved son, may he live. I received your letter on Friday, along with the sum of seven gold pieces and the folio from Chosh Mishwit. Again today, I received your letter with the half silver ruble. I read your letters carefully, and on each occasion I hear and understand the bitterness of your heartfelt cry. I am very surprised with you, my dear son, because judging from your letters, your soul's bitterness has grown very great and intense indeed. Why do you not recall and take to heart the truth of those words of our awesome Master, Teacher, and Rebbe of Holy Sainted Memory, which, through God's kindness, I have spoken about so often. I refer to, I, I refer to his teaching that, that from rights within the sweet of our bitterness, we must transform it into great joy. This is what he taught in the verse, happiness and joy will take over. Grief and sighing will flee, that a person must forcibly grab and, to and take hold of the sorrow and bring it into joy. He must say to himself, on the contrary, if indeed it is so bitter for me, so terribly, terribly bitter, then now I should certainly be extremely happy, for I still wear seats and film, which no matter what are important points in my favor forever and for all eternity. No matter what, I have gained this forever from all my labor. Besides this, I sometimes merit to get charity to, and above them all I am struggling and striving to come close to the hidden light, this holy new light, who will definitely rectify me beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I, in my destitution, promise you this with no doubt whatsoever. So I am obliged to be extremely happy every day, all the time, and to turn all the bitterness, grief and sighing into great joy. For I am nonetheless worthy of all this. The more intense the distress and sighing grow, the greater my joy. The more intense the stress and sign grow, the greater my joy, the more I realize my own lowly state, the happier I am. For even though the truth is that I am extremely blemished, this is, this is precisely the source of my joy, that someone as blemished as this could be privileged to experience such holiness and not to oppose a whole original light such as this. Ma, most people are so far from him and he is so very hidden from them. Many people oppose him vehemently, but I in my destitution do not oppose him and I am I'm not against him. In fact, I have many times taken tasted the honey sweet nectar of his words, and I know that he can show those who dwell on high that they still know absolutely nothing about God, as in what have you seen, what have you searched out, and he can show those who dwell up down below, i.e. the lowly and inferior people, including myself today, and even people worse than I am, if any such people exist, he can show all of us that, that the whole world is full of his glory, and that glow, and that God is still by us, with us, that, and that God is still by us, with us, and close to us, constantly, and at all times, and that God is still still by us, with us, and, and close to us, constantly and at, all, and, at all, and at all times. God is with you. Do not be afraid, my son. Believe me. I am telling you pure truth when I say that the Rebbe really means you. I am telling you in His name, God is with you. 
and everything would turn into good. Just strengthen yourself with the utmost determination to carry out my words straightforwardly and to strive at all times to turn sadness into joy in the way I described. The rest you will understand for yourself. Then by strengthening yourself in joy and by becoming accustomed to the habit of cheering yourself with silliness and the like, you will be able to shake off those thoughts which so weary you. Those thoughts which are referred with those thoughts which are referred to as a yoke of iron and the heart's chaos. These thoughts are what the Tana cried out about. Woe to me from my yates and my urge. And woe to me from my yates and my creator. Rashi comments, Woe to me from my yates and my urge, which wearies me with evil thoughts. You see then, the holy Tana also suffers from evil thoughts. So while your thoughts are certainly much worse than his, you can rely on the power of the elder of holiness to rely on, who said explicitly that we should rely on his power. I already re revealed to you in all sincerity that all these statements which, which the Rabbi made were also meant for you and for people worse than you. In every generation, he said explicitly that everything that he says and reveals is for him who is here today and for him who is not here. Believe me, I encourage myself as well with these words I am writing you. While there are certainly many differences between me and you and between all people, since no two people are alike, you should know and believe that these statements and all of the Rebbe's holy words will ask, were also meant for you personally. We can truly, we can really and truly be happy. We can really and truly be happy with the words of your Father yearning to bring you to joy with His great kindness. Let us be happy and rejoice in His salvation. Nelson of Breslau, 354, letter 354, thanks to God, Sunday Chukas. Greetings to my beloved son of Yitzchak May Live. I received your letter today before the morning prayers along with the four gold pieces. No, thank God I have already, now, thank God I have already prayed with the congregation. Today is Rosh Chodesh Tammuz. Rosh Chodesh is the root of repentance. And Tammuz is an anagram of the verse, Zichr Toilas Moshe. Remember the Torah of Moshe. However, in the anagram formed by the phrase, Tammuz is written without its Vav. In the English translation, transliteration here, only uppercase letters are recognizable when the word is written in unvocalized Hebrew. When the word is written in unvocalized Hebrew, this is because in Tammuz, the tablets brought down from Mount Sinai were broken, and the tablets measured by measured six by six, and the numerical value of the letter above is six to put them around. It is necessary to remember all this well. It is necessary to remember all this well, as we are instructed in this very lesson, which teaches that Tammuz is an anagram of remember the Torah of Moshe. For all these words of mine are the Torah of Moshe itself. For all these words of mine are the Torah of Moshe itself, since they relate to the fulfillment of the Torah. For all these words of mine are the Torah of Moshe itself, since they relate to the fulfillment of the Torah. But it is necessary now to review them again and again. Remember, and remember well all the favors and miracles that God has done with us from the time of our teacher Moshe, from the day of the giving of the Torah up to this very day. Our rabbis of blessed memory cautioned us a great deal about this. It is also written, remember the miracles he had performed, and remember the day that you stood before the Lord your God at, at Chodesh, Sinai Sinai Remember everything he has done with us in every generation through his true Siddiquim and the spiritual giants of every generation and in particular what he has done with us in this generation for while we in our poverty and enslavement and abysmally low low state have descended because of our many sins to unimaginable depths God has wondrous and bestowed his kindness and salvation upon us by letting us know this Know these, know things such as these, and reminding us again and again about the Lord our God and His Holy Torah. In this way, all of us too, those people who are alive today and are able, those people who are alive today are able to keep on remembering the greatness of the Creator, the unique and the, the unique, the, the unique and first. May His name be blessed, who is watching over us at all times and constantly waiting to bestow good upon us, to bestow good upon us in the end. We see this over and over amidst our, no, our enormous destitution. Sometimes when it seems as if there's just about no hope at all, God forbid, as in, and I said I've lost all my hope and expectation in God. At those times I say to my heart, there is hope. God's kindness never ends. His compassion never ceases. This is what we say three times a day for your miracles, which are with us every day, the good one. Your compassion never ceases. Believe with perfect faith, my dear son, my heart's beloved, that all, my dear son, my heart's beloved, that all these words also apply to you. I've already written you a great deal, in particular, in my previous letter of last week, about how you must be certain to turn grief and sign into joy. 
You thank me a great deal for this encouragement, but you still write me again and again of your bitterness. And this is difficult for me to bear. This is not the way, my son and friend. This is not the way, my son and friend. While a broken heart is certainly very precious, it is more important to prevail and to turn everything into joy. You not. It is more important to prevail and to turn everything into joy. You not. You do not yet know, my dear son, how very, very, very far God's kindness and miracles reach for each person, in particular for those who hold on with the bonds and chains of love to the holy truth sadiq who draws forth ever new loving kindnesses constantly every day thank god you two are one of those who truly hold on to him with a mighty unbreakable and everlasting bond so now you must only dance and skip over the mountains out of sheer joy that you merited with god's help to be counted among those who hold on to him tomorrow you will hear from Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi david may the light shine about what i said on the verse the secret of god is with those who fear him and how therefore the next verse continues. My eyes are always to God, for He will free my feet from the net. Just fortify yourself with the utmost determination. Just fortify yourself with the utmost determination to bring yourself to joy. And any way to bring yourself to joy, any way you can, and to turn all the sorrow and sighing, and all kinds of depression, sadness, and worries into joy, for I still know that Talmud is an anagram for remember the Torah of Moshe and in accordance with the minuscule and understanding I have of this, it is necessary to say about this holy teaching too, if I came into the world only to hear this, it would have been enough. This teaching touches upon the rectification of the sin of the golden calf, to rectify the harm done by the breaking of the tablets, to rectify the harm done by the breaking of the tablets, which, which brought forgetfulness into the world, which is the source of all the physical, spiritual, and material distress that we suffered during this long and good exile. The essence of this suffering is the pain of each individual soul. As every person knows his own heart's hurts and pain, but it is a matter but it is a matter of no small significance that God has granted His wonders upon us and illuminated our eyes with the Rebbe's holy Torah teachings. In each of them, the Rebbe shows us and hints to us. In each of them, the Rebbe shows us. And hints to us very clearly. In each of them, the Rebbe shows us and hints to us very clearly that God's kindness has still not abandoned us and that God is still with me and with you individually and with all of us. In each of them, the Rebbe shows us and hints to us very clearly that God's kindness has still not abandoned us and that God is still with me and with you individually and with all of us who reveal to us to our teachings filled with love and kindness. The likes of which have never been heard. Every word of them can encourage you too, and all the most and all the most inferior people, provided that they do not oppose the one who draws upon them new kindnesses such as these. Ultimately, he will save them too. But how very far are they from the one who bestows upon them favors such as these? How good is our portion that we do not oppose God forbid a benefactor and bestower of kindness such as the Rebbe, but at all times gave over his entire being for us. He worked and has he worked and has finished. And he will start and finish it again. The man will not rest. It is impossible for me to continue for a number of reasons. You wrote me of the distress you are having from your son's prospective in-laws, and in particular, the mistake you made while acting without my knowledge. While it is true that you acted foolishly in this, you, your being overly upset about it is even more foolish. You are just increasing your excessive downheartedness and worries. God forbid, and you are just increasing your excessive downheartedness and worries. God forbid, I certainly forgive you completely. What's done is done. And after the fact, it was certainly God's will that it work out this way. When people discuss a possible pairing of marriage partners, it is also a connection of sorts, and it does make and it, and it does make an impression. As for the future, you and I will rely on God. He and His righteousness and His righteousness will surely guide us on the straight path as He desires. God forbid that you should think about this at all anymore. Next time, just rely on Him. Give your affairs over to God, and your plans will be established. Just look at God's just look at God's kindness. He blessed you with a bride's intelligence, son, thank God. Most of your distress is the result of the kindness that God has done for you by gracing you with a bride's son. With God's help, what is more, God helps you buy him his necessities. And it is these things that cause you to regret having made the match for him. And it is these things that cause you to regret having made the match for him. Huh? Uh-huh. And it is these things that cause you to regret having made the match for him. The right way is to look at the good things that be happen with God's kindness. Then God will help you and give you good advice on how to handle yourself properly in this matter. It certainly is right and fitting that you be, that you be, that you be, that you began to is it is it certainly is right and fitting that you began to speak with him about this as he discussed with you. 
It is impossible to rush things though and everything has its proper time. But the one who sits and makes matches guide you on the true path in accordance with his will, which is good. There is no time to go on, but you will undoubtedly infer a great deal from my words. I, just fortify yourself to fulfill all that I say, to craft toilet to prayer and good deeds every day, and to express yourself to your Creator above all, to really strengthen yourself to be happy. Let us be happy and rejoice in his salvation. The words of your Father, Nelson, are rest of letter 355, with God's help, Tuesday, Bullock, 5601, but did you, my dear beloved son, may his light shine. I received your letter this past Sunday. I rejoiced as over a great treasure when I saw your enormous desire and eagerness to keep sending me letters in order that you may benefit from the light of truth which is stored with me through God's miraculous kindness. You uplifted me and you wrote that my letters succeeded in cheering you a little. This is my whole aim. You do not, you do not, met, you do not yet know the exalted lights that are created for God. You do not yet know the exalted delights that are created for God when a person encourages a Jewish a Jewish soul amidst its enormous bitterness. The bitterness may be physical, spiritual, and monetary, from the person himself, from the spouse, or from his children. But when someone instills in him some hint or glimmer of truth, so as to cheer him, and thereby encourage him a little, this is the essential fulfillment of the victim. But when someone instills in him some hint of or a glimmer of truth, so as to cheer him, and thereby encourage him a little. This is the essential fulfillment of the dictum. When a person upholds one Jewish soul, it is as if he had held an entire world. If I were to relate to you the many hardships that one sees here in a thousand pages would not suffice. At every time, with every person, and in every place, one sees that there is no place to flee, and no place to run except to God in the Holy term. I absolutely cannot go on any longer, God willing. I will write you a somewhat longer letter from him. According to what God's kindness and salvation will allow, the words of your Father waiting to see you in life, health, and joy. Thus, in a blessed letter, three fifty-six with God, with, with thanks to God, Tuesday, Pinchas, the third, the seventeenth of Thomas, fifty-six and one, Bedicha, my dear beloved son, I am now ready to set out for Teplik. May God grant me a safe journey. May we be worthy of examining our ways and of feeling our souls exile in our hearts, because this is the main tragedy of the temple's destruction and exile. And of feeling our, ex our souls exile in our hearts because this is the main tragedy of the temples, of the destruction and the exile. May we be among those who mourn over this until we merit to witness its rejoicing. May God comfort us and make us joyful every day as well with His true joy that we merited to be among the children of Zion and Jerusalem. There's much to say about this and you will understand a little of it for yourself. There's much to say about this and you will understand a little of it for yourself. I am in a great hurry and I cannot go on any longer. God willing, I will write to you a fuller letter from Uman, the words of your father, waiting for salvation, thus an aggressive, loving greetings to all our comments. Letter 357, the thoughts of Wednesday night, Masai, 5601, Uman. Warm greetings to my dear beloved son, the learned of Yitzchak, and he lived along with all his children, may they live. You should know, my dear son, that I arrived in Teplik last Thursday night, every Shabbos, Pashas, Pinchas, as, as I walked in the house, Reb Nachman, the son-in-law of Reb Nassanel, handed me the letter from you. I read it at once. That the merchandise, that the merchandise has already been sent. How pleased and encouraged I was. You really uplifted me. I arrived here on Monday night, close to midnight. And I found two letters from you on, and the folio. I was very pleased, however, as I was also extremely, however, as I was also, as, however, I was also extremely pained by the many errors and blurred printing that is there. It's also extremely pained by the many errors and blurred printing that is there. Still, it is, it is undoubtedly, still it is undoubtedly a wondrous kindness and great salvation that, to all the uproar, we merited a glimmer of salvation such as this. And God, we see in this and in other similar and, 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 and in other similar matters that God's kindness has still not abandoned us. God's kindness is never ending and His compassion never ceases. I'm now waiting for a letter from Reb Chaim and Reb Chaim himself, and then I will give them the appropriate response. Right now, I do not know what to think, as I have no information from them. You didn't tell me who sent the letter with which the messenger brought. Was it from Rabdov alone or from Reb Chaim as well? Be sure to send me now another full report. May God send a complete cure for the pains of your son, the David Svina, he lived. I'm writing for God. I'm waiting for God to let me soon receive a letter from you with news of an improvement. I intend to stay here until after this coming Shabbos because the following Sunday is Erev Rosh Chodesh. God willing, on Tuesday or Wednesday I will travel from here 
to Tzeravetze for Shabbos Chazoyim and from there to Tzirim for Shabbos Nachamu. May God guide me safely on the path of truth because I am relying on Him alone. May He guide me on paths of righteousness for His name's sake. There's no time to go on with words of truth plus the fact that it is now Bain and Mitzarim, three weeks between the 17th of Thomas and Tishabov, and a person cannot think clearly for our physical and spiritual exile has continued for a very long time indeed, and it has sated us with bitterness to the point that it is almost too much for us to bear. What comforts us is our, in, our des- in our destitution that God gave us the remedy in advance of our, mor- of our mortal blows, and that we know about such a holy man of Israel as the Rebbe. He is our comfort, collectively and as individuals. May God help us to cry and to mourn over the destruction of the temple and most important, to mourn over our sins which prevent us rebuilding until we merit to turn all grief and sighing to happiness and joy, to trust in His kindness and great salvation. That everything will turn into good. The words of your Father waiting for salvation and praying for you, Nassim of Restland. Greetings to all our comrades with a great love. Letter 358 with thanks to God Monday. Chodesh Menachem Av 5601 Um on greetings to my dear beloved son the learned Rabbi Yitzchak may he live along with all his children may he live first part of this letter missing dot 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 I do not know what to write to you now as I have already written you a great deal thank God when you send a letter to me in Shirin try to get a letter from my sons may they live Rabbi David Tzvi and Rabbi Nachman may they live should write themselves and you should write me about each one of them and about all our comrades May God strengthen your hearts to trust in His kindness all the time and to, and to do good, to grab all that you can every day, each one of you according to His love. This is the meaning of the verse, trust God and do good. That in, that in order to do good, a person has to trust God both with regard to His livelihood and in order to muster His own inner strength. A person requires enormous trust in God's kindness and in His abundance, inexhaustible compassion as, it is, as is written, and that trusted in your loving kindnesses. Then through this, he is able to do good. Time does not allow me to write any more than this. The, love, the, the words of your father waiting for salvation, thus in a breast of greetings to all my family in Breslov and to all our comrades there in your community and in the area surrounding greetings and abundant salvation. Fortify your hearts and be strong. All you who hope in God, perhaps you received some report that the merchandise reached its destination safely. So let me have satisfaction of knowing immediately in addition let me know who sent the letter which I received through the messenger. If you hear anything in writing or by word of mouth about our business, you should let me know immediately. Na